Well, hello there, good people. It's your boy, Johnny J, and welcome to another epic photo adventure. In this video, I'm gonna teach you step-by-step -step how to create epic landscape photography panoramas. All right, let's get into it. My name's Johnny Spencer, Johnny J for short, and I'm a landscape and nature photographer for the National Park Service here in Australia, who I've been working for for over 24 years. I have a real passion for being out in nature with the camera, and I've decided that I want to share all that photography experience that I've learned over many years of trial and error with as many photographers as possible. we're here we're on site it's looking beautiful right now we've got some cloud blowing in we are on the sand dunes north of where I live and uh, it's looking absolutely amazing I'm loving how we're looking got nice texture in the sand we've got some clouds in the sky here with a few friends and uh, I think it's gonna be another lovely lovely sunrise and I've got a few thoughts on what I'm gonna shoot there's a really interesting view of some headlands and islands so I'm thinking long lens I'm thinking zoom in on the islands, create a big panorama, and uh, oh, man, this is living. This is living. All right, I'll get set up and I'll get back to you what I'm thinking. we're all set up now things are looking pretty cool out here we've got some nice magenta tones the sun is just rising over here so this shot I'm gonna be shooting 90 degrees away from the rising Sun so you can see the Sun's this direction and I'm shooting this direction so it's gonna make it nice and easy to capture everything all in one uh, exposure here turn the camera around to portrait orientation it's really simple when you've got these uh, longer lenses with collars if you just loosen up the collar, you can just twist it around from landscape to portrait orientation. You can see it's even got the dots there for portrait and landscape there to line up, which makes it really easy to switch around from one to other. Because I'm shooting like a landscape panorama, I really want to have my camera in portrait orientation, okay? I want to shoot segments of my panorama in portrait orientation. So it's gonna be a real simple one actually. It's not gonna be pretty straightforward. You wanna try and get your camera as level as possible. So I recommend what you do is if you've got a level on your camera, you can see that's the level there, that green line. I try and get that as level as possible. So when I go around, I shoot my row of panoramas like this, everything is nice and as straight as possible. That's, that's the key here. Everything is as straight as possible. And you can see, Right now we're starting to get some beautiful side light on the sand dunes out there, which is just looking really, really cool. Absolutely loving that. So at the moment I am about, let's see here, I'll go into around 135 mil. I think that's nice, 135 mil there. That's gonna get all those islands and we're starting to catch a bit of light on the islands there. You can see it's looking absolutely beautiful. So I'll just run you through what I'm looking at with that panorama. The composition's looking good. Look at that light in the foreground there. So I'm just running through. This is what I'm gonna be capturing. Obviously the frame is a little bit thinner because it's 16 by nine in video, but you get the idea. Just running through that scene out there. It's looking really nice all the way through. I wanna finish up somewhere around there. I think that's a good finishing point. And I think this mountain here, somewhere in there will be my starting point. So it's gonna be quite a long panorama, but it's looking really, really nice. I'm just gonna pick my starting point, and you know, I highly recommend you overlap further out of your starting point than what you want, because you can always crop it out in post, okay, when you merge these together. And I'm gonna take my first frame there. You know, a third to 50% overlap between these shots is gonna be perfect. There's another one. And chances are I might use some of these because they're further out in the panorama, but that's okay. I'm loving that side light we're starting to get now. That sun is just pumping up. Beautiful. So what I am going to do is just play that last one back and just double check everything is nice and sharp there. So let's go into this one with the mountain in the background. You can see the foreground's all nice and sharp, all sharp, all the way through. 
The background's looking pretty decent as well. So everything is acceptably sharp. I think that's perfect. So the idea now is that light starts to come up. I'm gonna keep shooting that panorama over and over again because the light's changing out there. The light in the foreground particularly, really, really beautiful. Side lit dunes just brings the texture to life. It's just awesome. So one tip I do have is when you're shooting your panoramas in between the frames, just stick your hand in front and take a, take a frame of your hand. It just makes your life so much easier when you get back into your post-processing software to work out which shots are part of your panorama. So even if you tilt down, shoot the ground, just shoot your hat, something, just put a blank frame in between your panoramas and it'll make it way easier when you're post trying to work things out. A couple of things I also wanted to mention is you want to be in full manual mode. Because you're taking different frames in this panorama, you don't want anything to change as part of that. So full manual mode, uh, select your ISO aperture and shutter speed so it's constant throughout all the frames. You also want to select a white balance. You can easily just go with one of the presets, daylight, cloudy or shady if you're not sure of Kelvin value and that'll be totally fine. All right, good people, that was awesome. We got some beautiful side light. Unfortunately, the clouds did blow out of the panorama, but we still got some lovely tones and some lovely side light on those islands and headlands out there. So let's jump over to Lightroom and uh, I'll show you how I put this one together. All right, good people, before we get into the post-processing and I show you how to put this panorama together, I'm gonna ask you for your help. If you enjoyed this video and you love landscape and nature photography as much as I do, every week I release a new video showing you everything that I've learned on my photo journey. Uh, so if you subscribe below, it's just like following on other social media networks and how that helps me, it helps me with my goal to spread the word about my videos to as many photographers as possible so that I can help as many people on their photo journey as I can. So I'd really appreciate your support below. Thank you and uh, let's jump over to Lightroom and I'll show you how I put this one together. All right, here we are in Lightroom. So here's the final photo and you'll notice I've cropped it in a little bit. I didn't use as far as what I, I thought I would in the field. And that's totally fine. That's why we overshoot our panoramas. So anyway, here's our files that we've got. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna bring up that bottom bar. So what I wanna do is I highlight the first one, hold down shift, highlight the last one, okay? So they're all highlighted there in a row. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go photo merge panorama, okay? And it's gonna do its thing here. Now you'll notice we have three different selections up here, spherical, cynical, and perspective. Um, you can see how which one works better. Look, honestly, it's usually the default at the top. That's what I normally do. Now, boundary warp is a cool thing too. It sort of spreads the edges out a little bit and fills them in. So play around with that. It often can be handy just to, to get things filled on the edges and it does a pretty good job there. Um, auto crop's fine too. You can let it crop in a little bit there. And auto settings is totally fine as well. Now, I usually don't create a stack. All that does is stacks all these images together in your library. I don't usually worry about that. And then I just hit the merge button. And within a few seconds, we'll have our panorama ready to go. Awesome. Now, there's a reason why I love doing my panorama merging inside of Lightroom particularly. Uh, it's because it gives you, if you have a look here, you can see if I do Command I, Here's our merged photograph now. You can see I've got this .dng. So this is a negative file, so a raw file, not a negative file. This is a digital negative, they call it, which is an Adobe's raw file format, okay? So that's what's cool about this, is we've got the raw file as a starting place here. So I'm just gonna hit pick on that one. Let's go back to our picks. So here's our file here, and you can see there's a big problem already. We've got a bit of a kick up here uh, in the uh, horizon line. So we're gonna go to Photoshop to fix that up. So I'm just gonna start with the basic edit. And often, you know, what I'll do is just start with the auto button here. It's already done the auto, which is really good because I got it to add those settings on the way in. But I am gonna just pull the exposure down a bit, hold down shift, double click whites, double click blacks, probably pull them whites down a little bit there. And that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy where things are at now. And I still think I'm gonna do that same crop, but I wanted to show you really in Photoshop how to fix up the horizon line. That's what's really important at this step. So this is pretty good. This is a good starting place. I think that's not too bad. There's probably a little bit of white balance I need to fix in the sky, but we might do that when we come back. So if I right click this, go edit in Adobe Photoshop. 
All right, so what I want to do, I want to drag a guide down, just a bit of a reference for this file, okay? So if you go, if you can't see these rulers on yours, if you go up to View here and you go down to Rulers, just click that on. It's Command R on a Mac or Control R on Windows. And what I like to do is just zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to drag down a guide from the top of this bar, okay? And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place it just below the horizon line there, and that's going to help us get this straight horizon line that we're looking for, okay? All right, so we've got our guide. In in place let's free transform this photo and fix up this horizon line here so if i hit command t or control t on windows command t on a mac that's free transform or you can go up here into edit and you can go up here oh, i've got to select the layer first might help and if we go up here to edit we can go down here to transform and what i want to do is go down here to warp okay so you can see we've got these little handles all over the place if i grab them i can just start to pull that horizon line down till it looks almost level there so what i'm doing is just looking to make sure it's not on the line remember we're just above it so i want to pull that horizon line down till it looks pretty level so now i'm just zooming in and just checking with my guide that everything's looking pretty decent there's no more warping we need to do that looks pretty good pretty happy where that's at now so if I just hit the enter key, it's going to finish that tree transform. And so then I can just grab that guide and chuck it away. And you can see within a matter of seconds, we've got a nice straight horizon line now. So if you can see here, that's before, after, before, after. And that is looking really, really good. I like where that's at. So I'm going to hit Command S or Control S if you're on Windows. And that's going to save this image back and put us over back in Lightroom. And uh, we can see our updated photograph. Alrighty, here we are back in Lightroom. Let's grab the crop tool here. And I'm just going to, I'm actually going to unlock it. I just want to free transform this one. So I want to take in all of this bottom area here. I'm going to crop that out on the left there a little bit. Crop that out on the right. This is on the third. Nice stepping stones moving through. I also just want to crop just above the cloud line there. I think that's really, really nice. Now there's a bit of cleanup work that I could have done in Photoshop. I didn't want to bore you with that. So that was our final crop. There was a bit more cleaning up and that to do. If you have a look here, here's the final photograph. Um, I've probably added a bit more co mid-tone contrast and did a few extra things, but I've done some cleanup of the footprints and bits and pieces. But I'm really happy how that turned out. Uh, if I do the shift tab and then L a couple of times, we'll get lights out and see that image full screen. And I think it's really nice. I love the final crop and you can see how easy it was for me to merge that together and then just make a decision on my final crop later. You know, I knew all the elements I wanted in there. I thought in the field I was going to go a little bit wider than what I, what I did in the end, but um, I've cropped it right down. So I really love these three mountain elements in the background and these beautiful layers through the scene. And we've got our eye, our stepping stones of our light and dark areas of these clumps of sand and also this amazing side light that's coming through here. Just absolutely love it. So I think the final photograph turned out really nice and you can see in just a few steps there how easy it is to create panoramas. All right, good people, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up below. I'd really appreciate your support. And uh, drop me a comment if you've, got a com if you've got a question or some feedback. I'd really love to hear from you. That would be amazing. And as always, if you're enjoying these landscape and nature photography videos, go and check this one out. You'll really enjoy that too. It's uh, another fun photo adventure. And as always, <laughs> stay inspired and keep creating. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.